In this video, we will name covalent compounds and write covalent formulas. It's a lot easier than the ionics. Ionic compounds have a lot of rules to them. You have to be obsessed with charges. You have to know how to find the charge for all the elements, make the compounds neutral so the electron transfer is the same. You have to worry about your transition metals that have Roman numerals and multiple charges. Then you've got your polyatomic ions and parentheses and all kinds of stuff that go into writing ionic formulas. It took us about a week. And it is a skill that we must master. The ionics are very common, but covalents are a little sigh of relief. Uh, these are a lot easier. Number one, covalent compounds should be all non-metals. So you can use this naming system if the compound is covalent and it contains all non-metals. That's important. Number two, you don't need to worry about charge. The charge comes from electron transfer. The electron donor is the positive ion. The electron acceptor becomes the negative ion. You don't have that in a covalent compound. The electrons are shared. The sharing electrons does not create a charge. So sometimes people will look at these formulas and maybe say like P2O5. They'll be like, how on earth do you get P2O5? P2O5. Because they'll say, well, phosphorus has a charge of minus 3 and oxygen is minus 2. This compound doesn't make any sense. You are right in an ionic sense. Phosphorus and oxygen cannot form an ionic bond. They both need more electrons. In an ionic bond, you have to have a positive ion, the electron donor, and the negative ion, the electron acceptor. And so you're right, this could not exist ionically. But as a covalent compound, we don't form charges. We share the electrons. Sharing does not create a charge. So if, don't be afraid of putting some of these non-metals together, even though you think they might have the same charge. It's okay as long as they share electrons. Then to name the compounds, we just use these prefixes. And a lot of them are pretty simple. Monoditri, one, two, three. Tetrapentahexa. People usually get those ones right. Tetra is four. Penta, five. Hexa, six. Hepta is usually the one that they forget. Hepta is seven. Octa is eight. Nano is nine. And Deca is ten. So we use these little prefixes to indicate how many atoms are in that compound. So for example, if you have two phosphorus, we just say diphosphorus. And then we're going to end it with IDE, just like the ionics, trioxide would mean three oxygen. CC bus, report to the main office. CC bus to the main office. And that's all there is to it. If you are given the name diphosphorus trioxide, you don't have to write charges. You don't have to make it neutral. You don't even need a periodic table. Diphosphorus trioxide is two phosphorus and three oxygen. Now you can also change the ratio. And all you have to do is change the prefix. Now this would become diphosphorus. Pentoxide. And I'm not going to be real picky with the spelling. You could say pentoxide. You could say pentaoxide. Sometimes when you have like an O and an A or two O's next to each other, we might drop one. But I don't know what you mean if you say pentaoxide, five oxygen. It wasn't this easy with the ionics. If we had two ionic compounds 
FeO, Fe2O3, for example. These transition metals that can have multiple charges required the Roman numeral. And so we had to work backwards and we had to figure out the negative charge and balance the positive charge. And we called this iron Roman numeral 2 oxide. Or here the iron is minus 2, I mean the oxygen is minus 2. There are three of them, which gives me a total of negative 6. I need a plus 6 from the iron. There are two atoms of iron, so each must be plus 3. This was iron, Roman numeral 3 oxide. So you can have ionics or covalence that can have multiple ratios, but it's sure a lot easier with the covalence. All we have to do is change the prefix. Again, we don't need to worry about charge when it's covalent. Uh, some other ones that are real common. Your carbon dioxide. Everybody says carbon dioxide. You don't even think about it. You do not need mono on the first element. Now, if somebody said mono carbon dioxide, I wouldn't mark it wrong. I know what you mean, one carbon. But mono is optional on the first element. And then we would say dioxide to oxygen. Now, if you get his cousin, CO, now this would be carbon. And we do have to say mono on the second. Carbon monoxide. Or again, you can say monoxide, and I'm not going to mark it wrong. But often we might drop one of the vowels. So I kind of remember these two. You have to put the mono on the second element, if there's only one. So I have to say monoxide, but you do not need mono on the first. It's optional. So again, at the time, this seems really easy. Everybody gets these right. It's just the prefixes, which most of them you're familiar with. Just don't fall in the trap. Carbon monoxide, sometimes by accident, people will do this. Carbon, oxygen, plus 4, minus 2. And so they'll tell me that. They'll say carbon monoxide, CO2. They'll be so proud of themselves. Look, I balanced the charges. Carbon monoxide. Yeah, but it's covalent. Carbon and oxygen are two non-metals, so they're not going to transfer electrons. They share electrons. And when we share... We do not build up a charge. Carbon monoxide is just one oxygen. And now what we'll do later on in this study guide is draw these structures. Why do we have different ratios? Well, we can bond these covalents with a single bond, a double bond, a triple bond, and that can change the ratio. And we'll find that out later on again. We'll draw these. But it has nothing to do with charge. It has to do with the way that they share electrons. That can change the ratio. The other thing we should mention too, with ionics, we said you must simplify the ratio. So for example, an ionic compound, uh, how about manganese plus 4 and oxygen minus 2. It's ionic because manganese is a metal. And so we make this neutral. We should take two oxygen, plus four, minus four. Sometimes people will do this. And they'll get it wrong. And then they'll say, but, but, but I made it neutral. Two manganese, each plus four, would give me a plus eight. Four oxygen, each plus Minus 2 would give me a minus 8. They say, how can you mark that wrong? It is a neutral compound. Ah, but ionic compounds 
are supposed to be reported as the simplest repeating pattern of the crystal. Previously, we had talked about that, that ionic compounds are these crystals of alternating positive and negative ions. The formula is reported as the simplest repeating pattern in that crystal. So we should always simplify the ratio. Covalents are sometimes just giant molecules, individual molecules. Sometimes a covalent molecule could be a larger ratio. So in an ionic bond, ionic, we would not do this. We would simplify this, and we'd say it really should be MnO2. It would be okay in a covalent, though. You really could have, like, P4, I should say P2O4. P2O4. That is okay covalent. Covalent compounds really can be large molecules. I mean, you can have, like, 60 carbons and a hundred and some hydrogens. You can have giant macromolecules. This is okay in a covalent to have a larger ratio, but not in an ionic. Then it would be simplified. So here we would just say diphosphorus tetraoxide. 